what are your trends? And this is where needing that equation of the line, that trend line, that's where it's really helpful because the slope tells you whether something has increased or decreased, right? So that's what you would use to actually say it. You can't just create a graph, have lots of squiggly lines, and then say, see, there's a decline, or see, there is a, an increase. The audience can't see it. Next, uh, you do share the decisions you made in cleaning and analyzing your data. So it could be something as simple as um, the initial data, we received it from uh, Open Data NYC, and it has over 20 different parameters, everything from turbidity to top and bottom salinity, top and bottom dissolved oxygen, temperature, et cetera. And we needed to reduce it down to based on what we needed for our project, right? So that's step one. Step two, you then say something like, um, because of the research question that we're asking, we don't need to distinguish between the top and the bottom of, let's say, dissolved oxygen. So we took the average because we are interested in the entire water column rather than the top part or the lower part, right? So that's just an example of what you would share when you're sharing your presentation. Uh, and then, of course, you have to share why you made those decisions. And I already kind of shared that in my example. Um, but overall, the main reason is because you want to get the data down to a manageable level so you can actually analyze it. It just makes it easier. Finally, the conclusion. This should be up to two slides. It can be one. That totally works. Uh, what you're doing on this slide, what you're putting on the slide itself, is you are sharing whether or not your research question was answered and or if your hypothesis was true or not. Again, only phrases are allowed to be used on this slide. Um, what you should actually share with your audience, however, is why, what, what makes you come to that conclusion? And you, that means you do have to refer back to your graphs, for example, um, in order to prove that that makes sense. Um, and if it doesn't answer your question, that is totally fine too, because that happens all the time in science. That means you have to then say that this didn't, this, these graphs did not answer my question and here's why, and you show why. Um, same thing with hypothesis. If you find that it is not true, um, it doesn't support your hypothesis, then of course that means you do have to explain why it doesn't support it. Again, that's totally fine. Happens all the time in science. Finally, probably one of the most important things when it comes to this project and learning how to analyze data is really showing that you have given some critical thought about what your data can tell you and what it cannot tell you. And we talked about this a bit when we talked about the maps that were shown um, during our COVID-19 uh, quarantine, um, the COVID-19 maps that were shared by um, New York City Governor's Office, New, uh, New York City Mayor's Office, and what New York Governor's Office, um, and then how they shared it with context or information compared to how some people on social media media were sharing it without any context and the issues that can come with that. So same applies with your presentation. I'll give an example. Same project, combined sewer overflows, dissolved oxygen, Hudson River. You could, for example, say that if you, I created a graph based on this data, this data shows that the dissolved oxygen concentration has increased over time. And um, this increase went from four parts per million or 
uh, milligrams per million milligrams per liter to let's say eight let's be ambitious eight parts per million or milligrams per liter then i can share this may be due to the fact that wastewater treatment plants made improvements to how they treat wastewater how, and how much they can treat as well as green infrastructure that makes sense and that is true what you cannot say is that based on this data that the dissolved oxygen concentration will continue to increase and we will not have combined sewer overflow you can't say that or you cannot say that um we will never have so the dissolved oxygen concentration will go back down. No, sorry. The dissolved oxygen concentration will continue to increase and that the nitrogen levels will completely disappear. They will completely drop. That's not true because estuaries tend to have nitrogen regardless of whether or not there's combined sewer overflow. So that's just a very small example. Finally, uh, your last page will be, and I didn't put this in purple, and actually I'll do that now, will be the citations and the references. So just a page you need to credit where all the information that you, um, all the information that you gathered during your research, that includes Open Data NYC, um, and that includes any other data resources. Unfortunately, Wikipedia is not a, it's a reliable source, but it's not rigorous enough to be used in a scientific research presentation. However, there's plenty of primary sources that are listed at the bottom of Wikipedia that can take you to those primary sources, those can be listed. This does need to be an MLA format. Um, again, you have to cite all of your references. Uh, you can list secondary articles, that's fine. Um, Wikipedia is tertiary, and the reason I say that is because um, even though the writers do take, they do they do gather a lot of information and evidence from primary sources. Because it is not gone through an editorial process the way that um, journal articles are in terms of research articles, um, even newspapers, although that's less so lately, but that's another story. Uh, newspaper articles, etc. It's not the same. It's crap. Wikipedia is crowdsourced. And so because of that, in a very odd way, it makes it less legitimate. That's a another conversation. Regardless, Wikipedia is not, you can't list that. But other ones, you can list science, Scientific America, Nature, New York Times, New York Post, although I hesitate with New York Post. Um, you know, so you can use those sources. That's fine. They do have to be in MLA format. Uh, one trick to make it easier for you is to create a separate document on Google Docs and then you can go to add-ons here and then from here you go to get add-ons and what you should do is find once it opens an attachment uh let's say citation And so what I did was I found Easy Bib or Bibliography. You can also call it Bibliography, that's fine. And I'll just show you here some of the pictures. And so what it will do is if you have, if you have the um, news article, you can actually, go back, I keep switching. You can actually put the news article here the, the website name uh, and you could select website and that way it'll actually create the MLA format for you and that's what you're seeing right here and then that once you select it 
the right one, it'll automatically paste it to your sheet. And then from there, or doc, I should say, and then from there, just copy and paste that onto your either Google slide or PowerPoint or Prezi or whatever software you decide to use. So with all of that, what do you submit? So first you are submitting this on Sunday. Um, reason being is that uh, we'll provide feedback on not only presentation skills, but also the slides, the way you formatted everything. We're not expecting perfection. Um, if we see, again, too many words, we'll say that. Um, so yeah, so you, you submit it on Sunday, same time, 11.59 p.m. Uh, if you need more time, just let me know. But it, like, it almost doesn't matter, only because the main, the main deadline is the following week because you have to present anyway another thing is once you once you submit it um it's okay to unsubmit that's totally fine because i know you need to keep editing your slides i'll still be able to grade you that's fine so credit there's uh there are certain parts i do want complete mainly because it's easy and then the other ones they do um oh i have to edit this they do have to have some sort of content to show that you're working on it but it doesn't have to be 100 percent complete so uh okay i see how i did this so first slides and title right this is just to summarize these are all the slides that you need to submit even if they're not complete, they have to be on there. Title with your group members as a subheading, research question and or hypothesis, uh, background history, data analysis, oops, data analysis, conclusion, citations. Those are all your title slides. You have to submit those. What needs to have content or actual words in them slides, of course, the title and group members, uh, research question and or hypothesis, again, because it's easy, so you just copy and paste, and then your background history, again, because it's easy, you already completed a, a brief essay on that. Don't copy and paste the whole essay, that doesn't count. Again, you need the main points. Now, what must be partially complete, which means that you're working on it, there's words on there, it just doesn't have to have everything. Or everything done and that is the data analysis section uh, the conclusion and the citations again I know you're going to be working on this I don't expect it to be hundred percent complete if I were to give a percentage I want it to at least be between 70 to 80 percent complete right um, yeah. So partially complete just means you need at least the titles and you need to show that you are working on it. So for example, citations, they can literally just be website names because those are just placeholders for now. Fine. Uh, conclusion, you have maybe a couple of points, main points, main topics that you want to focus on. That's fine. It's not fully fleshed out. Data analysis, you have your graphs because those in a sense are for the most part done. You have your graphs, um, but you may not have all of your talking points because you can add talking points to, to that too. That's fine. Um, so hopefully that's clear. I kind of rambled a little bit, but um, it's the same concept as before. Just submit what you have. Uh, that way I can see it, your tutors can see it. Make sure you also share it with your tutors as well as myself. Um, if you need to unsubmit after that, that's totally fine. It doesn't affect your grade um, at all. And then, yeah, so I will create a separate posting for the presentation guidelines because they are different compared to whether or not or they're different if you are in a group compared to if you are presenting by yourself. 
So I didn't want to make this document too long. It's already long enough. And I don't want to make this video too long. It's already long enough. Okay, so I will make another post and video probably within the next couple of days. I'm going to focus the rest of this night on continuing to uh, add comments to your um, your submissions.